What happens when you first start a game, especially after you've taken apart all sorts of mechanisms and you've unsoldered and soldered a hundred contacts and who knows whether you did the right thing or not? There are all sorts of switches to be adjusted and parts that you've had to fabricate. And what will happen when you first power this game on? Well, let's take a tour and find out. Here we are at the back of the game. Have it all exposed so that I can go and look for bits and pieces that might be wrong. When I first put power to a game, I always use a variac. A variac is basically a variable transformer. I have it plugged into the wall, and then I have the game plugged into the variac. What happens is you start with very low voltage and you slowly increase it. The gauge there will tell you if you've got a short or not. So the first thing I want to do is I want to make sure I don't have a short, I don't have a solenoid that's attached and is being energized and uh, burns up. So let's check to see what happens. Well, I turned it on the first time started increasing the voltage and nothing happened. Well, turns out I hadn't turned on the game. So let's turn on the game and see what happens. It clicks, but I don't hear any solenoids that are energized. The first time I turned, I have to admit I cheated a little bit. The first time I turned on this game, this is what I heard. like what's happening is that the ball has fallen into a hole even though clearly the play field is upright and there are no balls in the holes and it's incrementing a horse one step each time and then going on to the next horse and incrementing it and then going on to the next horse well after exploring it a little bit I figured there must it must be a short between uh, the various contacts in the holes and what I found was that in one place I had missoldered something and soldered it to the wrong terminal which basically caused a short. So let's go fix that and see what happens next. Unfortunately these games don't come with a theory of operation. I was assuming that as a ball fell into a hole that it would automatically increment to the next light, to the next horse, but that's not what happens. It stays on that light stays on that horse until one of the balls hits a bumper and then it increments to the next to the next horse and you can see each horse takes a single jump because it got bumped one time when it falls into a hole into a pocket it doesn't necessarily increment the light so you could effectively one horse could win the whole way I noticed as I was demonstrating that this bumper doesn't work for some reason, so I'll have to go underneath the play field and see why that's true. The kickouts have to keep track of the number of increments it makes each horse go. The lit horse gets moved ahead at the start with three kicks, and as you progress down the play field, nine kicks and even twelve kicks. So this is the unit that actually causes all that to happen. You'll notice that when a ball lands in the thing, this keeps track and you hear the clicks as it goes across. Well, while it's doing that, it's holding off, kicking out, and this actual stack only is closed for that short little period of time that it shows there. You watch, it only goes down <clears throat> for an instant and then it stops. 
Well, there's a race condition because some of these, some of the relays down below also want to hold off that and keep track of the count. So what I have to do is make sure that this contact right here stays closed for as long as necessary to keep the pulse to the uh, kickouts as long as possible. The next thing that I noticed was that the horses are slow to return to the starting line. So when I turn on a game, start on it, and start it, this is what happens. Notice that the horse number one and number three didn't return to the starting line. And horse number two isn't really all out far back either. This is what the running unit looks like when it's outside of the case. What I'm doing now is I'm making sure that all the horses get back to the starting line when the reset solenoid pulls in. I'm working on number four right here right now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in the amount of preload into the return spring. Normally on step-up units you want about two and a half, two and a quarter turns of preload. Since this has to do a lot more work making those horses return to the starting gate, I put in a little bit more. So the way you do the preload is this is where it's going to be attached <clears throat> when, all, when it's ready to return when the spring has got so I want to put in three full turns of preload. So that's one, two, three. <clears throat> Let's see if this works. So there's the horse moving all the way to the end. looks like it still needs some help. And then the other thing you want to check is you want to make sure that you can move it one step ahead and that when the reset solenoid pulls in it returns. It looks like there's some resistance on the rods that the carriage is moving on. So let me take a look at that next. I might want to, on this one, I might have to put an extra turn of preload in there, but I'd hate to do that because that's just hard on the mechanism when you're working with it. Okay, so by adjusting things I was able to get them all to return. Things that you don't want to do, if at all possible, for example, is lubricate these rods that the carriages run on. For some reason, all the rubber rings and the dust that collects in a game will collect wherever there's lubrication and it will gum up the works so by making sure that everything is clean the game will stay running a lot longer. Here's an example of being able to make one move forward and then returning back to zero. You can see that the number five horse makes one step and still returns to zero and here's the number four that we were having problems with before. Sometimes you can let Wait until a game is running for a while to make sure that it sort of wears into position rather than having to fiddle with it. What I did is basically turn these rods slightly so that the part that's rubbing against the carriage is uh, sliding, sliding smoothly. The other thing you don't want to do is you don't want to put too much preload on these because then instead of just coming back nice and slow, they slam. Even now, they're clicking pretty hard, additional preloads might get it started, but then it's going to also hit very hard at the other end. Usually it's better to take apart the mechanism to make sure that it's working smoothly and there are no binding parts in it. Finally, you'll notice that on each one of these there's two wires that are missing, not connected. These are the ones that indicate which the winner is. The only one that's connected is number two here, and that's why we were able to hear the bell earlier. I'm going to connect those up and then install this unit back in the game, and we'll see how things are working after that. Sometimes things that seem so inconsequential and so far from the problem don't seem to be able to cause the problems that they do cause. 
This is a knockoff button, and what it does is when you have a certain number of credits on the game, the player is done playing and he wants to collect his winnings from the proprietor, the operator of the establishment. So the operator comes in and he sees how many credits are in the game, and then he knocks them off as he pays. And so what this does is you can thump the bottom, and this comes up, knocks off all the credits. Well, here's the original switch. You can see that the tab has been broken off right here, um, and when it was on the board it looked like this, and there was just a glob of solder, and so what happened is it shorted across that. made the game think that it was being reset the whole time. This is the counter. Every time you win a game, it increments one. And what was happening <clears throat> is that as soon as it incremented one, it would decrement Notice this post coming down until it got down to zero, and then it would tilt. And so every time you won games, it would tilt, and it wouldn't allow you to continue playing the game. So now that I've fixed that, I think maybe I have all the problems done with the game. Let's go see if it works. During the testing, I had horse number five win. You can see that horse number five and number four, it looks like, are winning. This is the light that shows the winner. It's one of the another <clears throat> another of the real benefits of now being able to keep credits on the game is I don't have to short out the coin door in order to get it to play all All I have to do is press the button in order to get it to reset. The other thing you'll notice is that the uh, lights for the horse that will get the additional pulses aren't working necessarily on all of them. Here number two is lit, number three is out all the way, number four is out, number five the only one working is the one here at the bottom, number one, the top one and the bottom one here are not working, and number two is working. The reason for that is one of the other problems that happened with the with the uh, knockoff button always being on is that it would run 30 volts through the 6 volt lamp circuit and blow out all the bulbs. So if there was a winner, uh, it would blow out the bulbs. 